What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. I bring to you version 2.0 of Plex Server Battle OS, or Battle OS for short. All right, so in today's video, I am revisiting my previous test that I did in my last video with this whole Battle OS introduction. This is the test where I put Windows 7 up against Ubuntu desktop. Now in this video, I asked for feedback on the test, what you guys think, uh, what I should test in the future, et cetera, et cetera. And I actually listened and read some comments that really hit home to what I was doing. And I decided to retest and relaunch this whole series. And I thought this was good to tackle this in the very beginning of the series to make sure that if I'm going to go through the legwork of getting everything done, it should be done properly. So one thing I noticed in the comments is somebody was saying that with virtual machines, there are some issues maybe with kernels or drivers or etc. And this is a variable that I personally do not know how to tackle to make sure that there's an even playing field throughout all of the different operating systems that I'm going to test. And that may or may not be possible uh, if somebody knew how to tackle VMs, but to be honest, I'm kind of new to VMs as a whole. So I just wanted to take uh, a more realistic approach using hardware that I'm not using at the moment. So again, thank you everybody for commenting on that last video. That's going to help me launch this new series. And I think I got it down now. So the new test is running off of my old server, something I haven't really used for much since I've retired it in favor of my new server. This server is running an i7-3770 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and it currently has a Samsung Evo 250 gigabyte SSD in it. Now for this test, because I didn't want to have to open up like 15 freaking windows, okay, it's not that powerful, but for this test, I did disable the hyper threading in the BIOS. And what this is going to allow me to do is get accurate results without having to push through and do like like, you know, 10 transcoded streams and possibly have some issues with network interfaces or my browser on my computer. Moving on, I actually decided to not only retest Windows 7 and Ubuntu desktop, but I also threw in Windows 10. Keep in mind that Windows 10 and Windows 7 are both the professional versions and both of them are tweaked in the hardware profiles to run in performance mode where all of the fancy stuff is disabled. And here is where things actually aligned with my original thought when I first started doing this and I'm kind of happy about that. Starting off with Windows 7, I was able to get five transcoded streams with one direct play streams. I could just not get another direct play stream to go. Now as an added bonus, maybe a tiebreaker, I'm not sure, I did decide to run the optimized feature through Plex, uh, converting a video down to a mobile platform uh, optimized video. So I ran that for about 10 to 15% of each video on each operating system to find out what its maxed multiplier was for converting. So for example, with Windows 7, it did have a max multiplier of 4.4 times. So that means it is going at 4.4 times the speed of what the movie is playing. Now for Windows 10, this is interesting, it actually gets the same five transcoded streams, gets the same one direct play stream, could not get a sixth one to go. However, I was able, only able to get 3.9x for the converting. So circling back to what I said before is needing a tiebreaker. That's actually why I started doing this. Uh, the tiebreaker here is Windows 7 is just a hair better than Windows 10 for being a Plex Media server. Now this is where the excitement begins because I went to Ubuntu desktop as I did before to test out its performance. And before I really give you the results, everybody kept asking me, why are you Ubuntu desktop? Why'd you use that? It's not a server. I know it's not a server, okay? Bear with me. This is an entire series that I plan on doing. And, and my thoughts here is to run more desktop applications, you know, point and click applications that are very simple to install the Plex Media Server for the everyday, you know, average user that may not know how to do anything too advanced in a computer. So Ubuntu Desktop is that click and go type of operating system that I wanted to test. So don't worry, you will see some server applications down the line. Alrighty, so here we go. Ubuntu Desktop was able to get the same five transcoded streams as seven and 10. But there's a kicker. With Ubuntu Desktop, I was actually able to get an additional four direct streams. That's four additional direct streams. So with Windows 7 and Windows 10, I was only able to get one additional direct stream. So that actually means technically Ubuntu desktop was able to beat Windows 7 and Windows 10 for as a Plex server. And to top it all off, it actually got a 4.5x conversion rating uh, for optimizing the video. So that's pretty cool. Ubuntu is the clear winner here able to produce three more additional direct streams than Windows 7 or Windows 10 could. 
which completely aligns with what I thought was going to happen in the first video. So I'm really glad that I'm taking this approach, putting it on an actual system running consumer grade hardware and testing it legitimately without having to worry about the VMs and kernels and all that other stuff. And just in case you're wondering, I did end up switching up the video file that I was running. I, was, I switched it to a video file that had DTS surround sound audio uh, versus the other one was AC3. So I wanted something that might take a little bit more to, uh, horsepower to do. Um, so I did run Back to the Future, which was a little bit over a 12 megabit file. It was actually 17 like something or 18 gigabyte file. So uh, it's a very beefy file. This is definitely stressing this, the server, especially because I'm taking that file all the way down to two megabits per second. But anyways, guys, my next video is going to be comparing Ubuntu desktop to something else. I'm probably going to do Linux Mint because that's another easy point and click thing. So if you guys have other suggestions, and again, I am going to get to server, um, more server based platforms later on once I kind of get done testing out these desktop environments. And also, thank you to everyone who said that you can download a free trial or, or whatever with uh, the Microsoft Windows server. Uh, so that's going to be something I'm going to approach too, and I think I'm going to classify that. I want to say middle point before I roll into to true server software applications because Windows Server is still technically a point and click, although it's kind of expensive to buy. So, But hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Appreciate every single one of you. Like and subscribe below, and have a great day.